it's just us. Well, hello, welcome to our uh, virtual college exploration. I'm gonna go ahead and cover some housekeeping things as people come in. I do want you all to know that this is gonna be operated as a webinar and that students, or participants rather, will be able to ask questions through the Q&A feature. Your camera and your microphones will be turned off. We do uh, um, suggest it throughout the session as you have questions, please don't hesitate to post a question and the panelists will get to answering that. We do encourage you to sign up for more sessions at oacac.org and the recordings will be available on demand thereafter. I'll turn over my control to the university and let them go ahead and begin to tell you a bit more. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Victoria. Hello, and welcome to the St. Vincent College Information Session. My name is Donna Edmonds, and I am an Associate Director of Admission at St. Vincent, and I work with all the students from Ohio who are considering our school. We're glad that you're joining us. This presentation gives you a good overview of our school. Joining me today um, is my colleague, Melissa Sobeck. Melissa is also an Associate Director of Admission. She will be assisting me behind the scenes and she will be presenting later in the program regarding our admission and financial aid process. Also joining our panel for the second part of our presentation is 2018 St. Vincent College alumna, Claire Jackman. Claire is from Ohio where she attended Strongsville High School. Claire is currently attending Kent State University, where she is pursuing her master's and PhD in psychological science. Remember that you may submit a question for us at any time during the presentation. Just click on the Q&A button, which may be found at the top or the bottom of your screen, depending on your device. If we do not answer your question during our presentation, we will get back to you individually. So now it is my pleasure to begin the information session about St. Vincent College. St. Vincent College is a co-educational, nationally ranked, private, Catholic, liberal arts college. We are located in Western Pennsylvania, in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, which is approximately an hour east of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And you can see from our map, we are about three hours from Cleveland, three and a half hours from Columbus, and five and a half hours from Cincinnati. So hopefully that can give you a good estimate of how long it would take for you to get to our campus. So why do students select St. Vincent College? The quality and education and excellent outcomes that students receive are some of the reasons why students choose us. We offer academic advising with faculty, rigorous capstone research, internship opportunities, and we have excellent employment outcomes. You'll receive skills for a balanced life of meaning and purpose, including spirituality, leadership, global perspective, and justice. Our total po undergraduate population is approximately 1,500 students. We have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. This offers personalized hands-on attention in the classroom. None of our classes are taught by teaching assistants and 92% of our faculty hold a PhD or terminal degree in their field. The St. Vincent difference. 55% of all of our courses have fewer than 20 students in them. 100% of students have a faculty advisor. 16% of our faculty are Benedictines. These are priests or brothers who are part of the Benedictine um, tradition at St. Vincent. We also have a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. Now that does not mean that you will only have 11 students in each class, but it gives you a good estimate of the fact that you will have individualized attention on our campus. This fall, we have returned to campus for in-person instruction at St. Vincent. Some of our classes are being taught in a hybrid fashion, so we can adhere to the CDC and local guidelines. Our semester is going smoothly and at this time, our students, faculty, and staff have remained safe and healthy. And we know how important that is. 
We have over 50 undergraduate and graduate programs of study housed in three schools. We have the School of the Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, the Alex G. McKenna School of Business, Economics, and Government, which includes our very popular criminology, law, and society major. And we also have the Herbert W. Boyer Law, I'm sorry, Herbert W. Boyer School of Natural Sciences, Mathematics, and Computing. This includes our nursing major that is offered cooperatively with Carlo University. So there are many different programs that you can pick from, um, and you don't even have to have something uh, decided before you apply to St. Vincent. We have resources to help you through that process. All of our majors will allow you to gain practical experience by giving you opportunities to intern, study abroad, and complete research on your own or with faculty. Retention. So what retention means is how many students actually come back to, to campus year after year. And for our first year students, St. Vincent, um, typically we have an 85% retention rate for our freshman to sophomore year, which we are extremely proud of. And you can see the national average is, is really only about 68%. So we work very hard to make sure that our students are having a good experience and that they can remain on campus. The St. Vincent College is ranked seventh best overall and third best among all private colleges for degree completion. This is um, from a New York Times study in May of 2019. So we're very proud of the fact that our students are staying and graduating from St. Vincent. The success after graduation of a survey done by our 2019 college graduates at St. Vincent, 98% report that they are employed in their field, doing service or seeking advanced degrees. And now it is my pleasure to turn the program over to my colleague, Ms. Melissa Sobeck, who will be talking to you about the admission requirements and the scholarship and financial aid opportunities at St. Vincent. Thank you, Donna. So yeah, now we get to the portion of the program, if you're liking what you're hearing so far, that hopefully you will decide to apply. So what does St. Vincent look for as far as our admission requirements go? Well, there's one of three ways that you can apply to St. Vincent College. As you can see, there's the common application that we accept and also our own hard copy application that you may find from a school counselor at your school or the quickest and easiest way to apply is online through our website at www.stvincent.edu forward slash apply. If you apply now, we're currently waiving the application fee all the way through December 1st. So I know when you're looking to apply to schools, that application fee does add up. So if you do submit the St. Vincent application, you will not have to worry about paying the application fee. So along with your application, we will need your official high school transcript, along with a copy of the SATs or ACT scores, if you were able to get into a test. We know that it's been a very difficult year, and a lot of SATs and ACTs have been canceled, but a little later in the program, we will talk about our alternative test options as well. So our letter of recommendation and essay are optional, but we strongly encourage you to submit a letter of recommendation from a favorite teacher, school counselor, a coach, someone that would show you in a very good light. Essay, we do not have a specific question if you decide to do the St. Vincent application. If you would like to submit an essay, this is a great section to highlight a little bit about yourself, why you're applying to St. Vincent College, something that you would maybe want us to know about you that stands out, that's unique, or to make it simple, you can use a paper from a class that you're really proud of to submit along with your application. We're rolling admissions, so you're going to hear that term a lot, but what does that mean? Well, for St. Vincent, that means you can apply throughout your senior year. Again, we are now accepting applications, but we have not started reviewing our applications for the 2021 class. We hope to be getting starting soon within the next week or two for our first review of applicants. But I always recommend that you apply. Try to get that in before that December 1st date so you don't have to worry about that application fee, but we still will accept your applications past that deadline. 
And then once your application is submitted along with your transcripts and your test scores, if you have them or you're going the test optional route, you have all the way until May 1st to make that decision of yes, I've decided to come to St. Vincent College or I've decided to go somewhere else. So take your time with the decision because it's a big one and you want to make sure the college is the right fit for you. So continuing on to the next slide. The test optional applicants we just talked about. So what do you have to do if you cannot get into an SAT or an ACT? So we have three options that you're seeing on the screen that you can choose from. The first one, you can write a three to five page writing sample from your junior or senior level high school course. Or you can provide us with a personal statement of no more than three printed pages or a video of no more than five minutes responding to the prompt that you see on your screen. St. Vincent is a learning community based in academic rigor, service, and personal spiritual growth. How do you plan to contribute to our community during your time as a student? And lastly, if you would like, you can have a virtual or in-person interview with your counselor, Donna Edmonds, or our Dean of Admission, Heather Kabala. So what else are we looking for when applying to St. Vincent? You see there, it's a minimum of 15 academic units in high school. That is a general math, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, general science class, science with a lab, four years of English, and we recommend two years of a foreign language, but it's not a requirement. So if you did get able, if you were able, sorry, to get into the SATs or ACTs, these are just averages that came in um, last year. So you don't have to have those exact scores. We look at students on a whole basis when applying to St. Vincent. And a GPA, the average score coming in this past year was around a 3.6. Again, we look at everything. So if you maybe do not have the GPA, but you were able to take the SATs or ACTs and scored really well, that's gonna help you out or vice versa. We know not all students are great test takers, but it shows in the classes that they're taking with a high GPA and maybe taking AP courses or college and high school courses. So scholarships and financial aid, 100% of our 2020 freshman class received some type of financial aid at St. Vincent. And more than 97% of our students are receiving some type of aid when applying or attending St. Vincent College. So let's give you a breakdown of our scholarships and financial aid. I always say this is just a number. Nobody has ever paid full tuition to come to St. Vincent. The great thing is if you are accepted, you will be receiving some type of academic aid through St. Vincent. But the tuition costs for in-state and out-of-state are the same, $36,586, room and board, $12,156, the required fees, $1,654 for a total cost of $50,396. Again, nobody pays that full cost to attend St. Vincent College. We have many scholarship opportunities. Remember, 100% of our freshman class has received some type of financial aid. Next slide. So this is the breakdown of the scholarships you can receive through St. Vincent College. So right now what you're seeing are if you've taken the SATs or the ACTs or even a CLT exam, it's very cut and dry. So if you do have a 3.75 GPA and you are able to get into a test center and scored a 1360 or higher in the SATs, you automatically receive $27,000 per year for attending St. Vincent College. Now again, there are some different ways we're going to be evaluating those scholarships based off your classes that you've taken in high school. If you were not able to get into the SATs, um, we're going to be looking at those AP courses and we're going to be looking at the GPA. But as you can see, the highest scholarship is $27,000 per year and the lowest scholarship is $17,000 per year. Other scholarships and grants that you may qualify for. So if you are the first in your family to go to college, meaning that your parents or guardians do not hold a four-year college degree, you will receive the first generation grant in the amount of $2,000 per year. If you attend a Catholic high school, you'll receive another $2,000 per year. If you are out of state, which you are, you will receive another $2,000 per year. If I'm talking to any students who may be homeschooled, you'll receive another $2,000 per year grant. And then the Benedictine Pastors Grant is a scholarship if you attend a Catholic church, 
um, with a priest of a, of a Benedictine order. And the way you can tell that is just by looking at your bulletin to see if your pastor is of OSB of the Benedictine order. And then we also have some specialized scholarships based off of your major. The STEP, which is more so within our sciences. Aurelius Scholars is more for our business majors, philosophy, English theology majors. And the Fred Rogers is any major involving with children. You can find more about these scholarships online at our website to find out about the deadlines and what is required. It is a separate application. And then again, if you are planning on filing the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, that will open up here very soon, October 1st, where you will use your family's income information to see if you receive any additional aid um, from the federal government and through St. Vincent. And the next slide, please. All right, Wimmer Scholarship Competition. This is a big one. This scholarship is offered to all of our seniors. This year, we are planning to have it on December 5th and you must come to campus to take this exam. Uh, first place winner gets full tuition room and board covered for all four years, and second through fifth place winner gets full tuition covered for all four years. So we will be posting that information probably sometime in end of October, I'm thinking you can go online to register yourself for the exam. You do have to have, at least, and correct me if I'm wrong, Donna, a 3.75 GPA. And the SAT score is around a 1300 or a little higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's saying yes, so I'm right. Um, and again, this exam offers all subject areas. There's no way to study or prepare for it. We invite you to take it though. You have nothing to lose. So if you're interested in St. Vincent, you will at least want to have your application turned into us and let us know that you have those requirements and we'll get you registered for the exam. Or like I said, um, here shortly or a little later in October, we'll have that posted for you to register. Okay. Thank you, Melissa, for your um, wonderful information. I'm gonna take back over uh, for now. Um, we are gonna be wrapping up our formal presentation shortly. So students, if you do have any questions you have for us, be sure to get those to us through the, the Q&A and keep in mind, we do have an alumnus with us who will be um, able to talk about her experiences as a student at St. Vincent as well. So please feel free to um, get us some questions and we're, we're gonna get to those momentarily. But I just wanted to highlight a little bit more um, about the um, outside of the classroom, life outside of the classroom at St. Vincent. Um, we briefly mentioned earlier study abroad opportunities. Some of our students study abroad for a semester, for um, a break, like maybe their uh, spring break or over Christmas break, they may go abroad. Um, some, our students have studied all over the world. And you can see some pictures from Thailand, Panama, Iceland, Australia, and France. The nice part about study abroad at St. Vincent is that you will work with one of our advisors who will, will kind of set up the program for you individually. So we're not necessarily putting you um, in a group with lots of other students. We're kind of tailoring the experience strictly for you. You may be going with a group, but if you prefer to do something individually, we can certainly make that happen as well. So again, some more about student life. We have more than 50 social, political, cultural, service, recreational, and religious organizations on campus. There is a lot to do at St. Vincent. Um, over 20% of our students are athletes. Um, it seems that we are welcoming um, our students. Right now, we're seeing a lot of um, potential athletes coming to check out the campus and meeting with our coaches. Um, we offer 13 NCAA uh, Division III sports for men and 12 for women. So there are many different sports. Um, again, to get more detailed information, your best bet is to go to our website and you can even click on the athletic tab and fill out a questionnaire that would go right to one of the coaches um, that we have on campus. So if you're not an athlete, there's still a lot to do as well. We have um, a um, campus ministry, which is very active. We have political organizations, drama, theater, music. There's just a lot of different things to do to keep you busy. And as I mentioned before, we're not that far away from some major urban areas. Um, Pittsburgh is probably 30, min 30 miles away. It, it's really easy to get into the city if that's something that you would like to do occasionally. 
We offer support services at St. Vincent. So there's tutoring available free of charge in all of our subject areas. We have a collaborative learning program. And this is um, something relatively new, but it, it's um, held once a week for our students enrolled in introductory science courses. So it helps them make that transition to college level work a little bit easier. And you have um, more one on one with your professors as well. Um, there's career advising, which begins freshman year, and that can assist with internships and job placement. So you don't have to wait till you're a senior to meet with someone in our career services. And even for students who may be unsure of their major, um, that's a good resource that you can meet with them and they can help you determine what might be a good fit for you as you're continuing your career at St. Vincent. So this is probably one of the most important slides because we would like you to visit us. Um, the best way to get a feel for the campus and the community is to come to campus and see it for yourself and experience it for yourself. Um, right now we are accepting visits. Um, we have made some modifications to our, our visit program due to um, some of the guidelines that we have to follow because of the pandemic. Um, but we are accepting appointments individually with students and parents. Um, and hopefully if things can change for anybody who um, this year, possibly even into next year, um, we typically would invite accepted students to come and stay overnight with us um, in the freshman residence hall and attend classes. Um, right now we're not able to do that, but hopefully we can bring that back soon. Um, if you are coming up for a day visit, we, we call that a Bearcat day, you can um, observe classes usually. Again, I don't believe we're able to let you into the classroom right now. We may be able to set up a virtual experience, but we can have you meet individually with our faculty, coaches, um, any administrators that might help um, you know, answer any questions you may have. We'd like you to allow about two weeks for um, setting up a visit, but we have a lot of flexibility. So the best way to do that is just to give us a call and we can set that up. We have a visit coordinator who makes all the arrangements or you can schedule online. Um, and the website for that is www.stvincent.edu forward slash visit. And if you don't remember that, just hit our website and I believe it's right on the homepage as well. Here's how you can contact us. So this is our, our mailing address and where you could find if you want to put us in a Google search to see exactly where we're located. Um, our main website, which is really the key for everything, um, www.stvincent.edu. Um, you can send us an email at admission at stvincent.edu and that would get routed to me because I will be the admission counselor working with all the students from Ohio. Um, and our, our main phone number is 724-805-2500. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, one thing I did wanna mention before we turn over our program to the next phase is that for students coming from out of state, if you would like to visit after you've been accepted, we do offer a travel reimbursement program. So what that means is if you're coming in, uh, driving in from a distance and maybe you need to stay overnight in a hotel, or just need a little help with gas, tolls, whatever, we can help cover your travel expenses up to $400. So that's something to keep in mind. If you, if you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to let me know and I would help coordinate that um, for you. But I think that's a wonderful way for us to help ease the burden of you, um, you know, making that trip to campus as well. So now, we are going to hit the next part of our program. So Claire, I'm going to ask you to um, join us now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so I'm really pleased that we have Claire Jackman joining us today. Um, I'm going to let her do an intro and she can tell you a little bit more about her experiences. Um, and we are going to, we have some questions for her and we know that you may have some as well. So please get those in if you'd like. Um, but she's going to be able to tell you a little bit more about what it's like to be a student at St. Vincent. So Claire, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, so I'm Claire Jackman. I graduated in 2018. Um, I was a biology major and I also had minors in math and psychology. Um, I was involved in a lot of different things um, as it's easy to do at St. Vincent. Uh, it was mentioned that there are about 50 or even over 50 different organizations that you can join on campus. 
And it's also easy to do a lot of them. Um, that's how you really make all of your friends. And so I was in Tri Beta, which is the Biological Honor Society. I was also in Alpha Lambda Delta, which is a freshman honor society for high achieving students that also has a uh, service component with it. And I was also in Psy Chi, which is a psychological sciences honor society. Um, but those are all sort of honor society things and the more fun things um, were, not to say that they weren't fun, but the other clubs and organizations I was in was uh, women's rugby, um, which a lot of my teammates were in that photo on that slide. So that was fun for me to see. Um, and I was also really involved in student government. So SGA, uh, Student Government Organization or Association. And I was a senator my first two years at St. Vincent, and then I became the executive secretary and then also the executive president one year. Um, and so that was really great. That was a quick, easy way to make 50 new friends because there are about 50 senators and that spans freshmen through seniors. Um, so that was a really nice experience and I really enjoyed that. Uh, Donna, is there anything else you want me to cover? Well, I think Melissa might have a question for you. Okay. Yeah, I have a follow-up to that, Claire. Maybe if you can explain to the audience, how did you find St. Vincent and what made you attend St. Vincent College? So the person who was really into the college search was my dad, <laughs> and he had the Barron's Book of Colleges, and he actually had different highlighters and different colors represented different things, and we were only looking at schools that were rated as competitive or higher. Um, and because I didn't want to necessarily stay close to home, we were also making sure that um, the percentage of students who stayed on campus during the weekends was still pretty high. I didn't want to attend a commuter school um, if I was going to be three hours away from home and then left alone on the weekends. Um, and I was also really interested in the sciences. Um, and so at the time, we had been looking at a few schools in Pennsylvania, and Grove City was one of them too. And they were in the middle of renovating their science building at the same time St. Vincent had just finished a few renovations in theirs. And so I think I went back and forth between the two schools, at least twice each, uh, to compare the different science buildings, because I knew as a bio major, I'd be spending a lot of time there. And I wanted to make sure, you know, they had all the equipment that I wanted, the space that I wanted. And it ended up being that I just really liked the Sis and Herman Dupre Science Pavilion. Um, and so that was another thing that really pushed me towards St. Vincent. Great, great. thanks, Claire. Mm -hmm. So um, sciences are a big part of your decision. And you were, were you a biology major at St. Vincent? Yep, biology major. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you ended up at Kent State going for a master's and a PhD in psychological sciences and how does that fit with your undergrad in bio? Yeah, so the area that I'm in at Kent State, um, it's behavioral neuroscience. And so what I specifically look at is animal cognition. So I use um, animal models to study kind of translationally human learning and memory. Um, and so that involves a lot of biology as well as psychology. Um, and I actually decided that I wanted to study behavioral neuroscience in psychology after taking a neuroscience course at St. Vincent through the bio department. At the same time, I was taking biological psychology in the psych department. Um, and so it was kind of those two classes where I was like, yeah, I see like the perfect marriage between bio and psych that's what I'm into. And so this at Kent was the perfect program for me. Great. Um, how did you decide on biology at the undergraduate level? Like what led you to choose that as your major at St. Vincent? Yeah, I had taken AP biology um, my senior year of high school. And I came into my college career with the idea that I might want to be a veterinarian or I might want to be a physician. Um, but then once I started doing my course load and then also junior year starting my thesis program for my bio major, I realized that conducting research was really what I wanted to do. Um, and so then that's what led me into graduate school. But yeah, so even though biology was always my major and what I always knew I wanted to do, the career that I wanted to do did change a few times um, while I was at SVC. Great. 
Claire, if you can elaborate a little bit, you hit on something there. You said you were able to do research on the undergrad level. If you can talk about how that became a possibility for you and also how the faculty at St. Vincent College assisted you in getting to where you are right now at Kent State. Mm -hmm. So I believe almost every major at St. Vincent has some sort of thesis or capstone research project as part of their major. Um, that's typically done junior and senior year or just senior year. Um, specifically in the natural sciences and in biology, we start that our second semester junior year of picking kind of what sort of research we want to study as well as getting matched with a faculty member who would suit our interests. Um, and then starting senior year fall, that's when we conduct all of our research. And then the spring semester is when we analyze all of our data. And then we also present it at the academic um, symposium, normally through a poster or talk session um, that's held in the science pavilion. And so it's quite an intense project, um, but it was really great in that I became very close with faculty members through this because you really are working one-on-one -on -one or the bio department allows you to work with a partner as well. But I happen to be um, by myself working with Dr. Kellum. And so that allowed me to get close to faculty. So then when I was applying to graduate school, I had really great letters of rec from them. And then I also, when I interviewed at graduate um, school interviews, I was able to talk about all the research that I had done. And so it was great having that experience, but it also, made me look really good too at interviews where I get, because the main job as a graduate student in my program is conducting research. So I had a really good basis for that. Um, and then also Dr. Kellum was great. He actually sent me a text a couple days ago asking if I would be on a student panel talking to current SVC students about what it means to attend grad school and uh, pretty much the whole process of applying, interviewing, and then attending. So I'm looking forward to that. And I still have that good relationship with Dr. Kellum, as well as the other students that Dr. Kellum was also um, advising those semesters. Which is awesome because mm -hmm. not too many people can say that they have these great relationships still with their faculty. I mean, you've been out of St. Vincent for two years and that you feel comfortable calling or vice versa, them contacting you to be part of something at St. Vincent College. So that is a rarity at St. Vincent. We're a little family, our own little community. Yeah, and you pretty much answered the next question I had for you, Claire, when you, you said, you know, did, the, did your experience at St. Vincent prepare you for graduate work? But could you elaborate maybe a little bit, because I would venture to guess many students out there might not be very familiar with St. Vincent. We're a smaller college, um, you know, and if they're thinking of, you know, their career or graduate work, different programs, they might not be thinking of a smaller school to attend. So maybe even looking at some of your classmates at Kent and how, you know, maybe where they've gone, how do you feel you compare and, and, and mix up with them, you know, based on your experience at St. Vincent? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the students in my cohort here at Kent did come from larger schools, um, but I feel I'm just right on par with them. Um, and actually, I think I might have had an even smoother transition into graduate school because the courses at St. Vincent, you really do have that small class size, that one-on-one -on -one with the professor, and my graduate school classes are about the same size. So I never went from like a 400 person lecture hall down to now I'm in a class with seven other students. Um, it was, you know, pretty smooth for me. And I think that also was something that um, the faculty at Kent recognized was, I don't think they looked at me differently than they looked at the students that came from the bigger schools or schools that people might be more familiar with. I think they recognized after talking to me about, especially the thesis program, just how intensive the St. Vincent curriculum can be. Um, and actually, someone who came to interview the weekend that I interviewed at Kent was a girl that was in my pod freshman year. So they actually had two students from St. Vincent interviewing, and there was only a group of five of us interviewing for this specific lab. So St. Vincent had a pretty good percentage of interviewees that weekend. That's great. That's great. 
this might be a hard question to answer, Claire. You you hit on it earlier, like you were involved in a lot at St. Vincent and, and coming from out of state, you wanted to make sure that there were other activities to do besides just the studies. You know, you need to de-stress, you need to have a good time, an overall positive experience. What would you say was maybe one of your favorite activities that you were involved with or a favorite event that you participated at St. Vincent College? Um, I'd say the one that I probably enjoyed the most was being part of the orientation team. Um, and so we have a very, um, I feel like St. Vincent's the only place that does this, of pairing the older students with the incoming freshmen. And so I might have like three to four littles but the fact that when they move in on their move-in day, all of those bigs carry all of their, uh, the new freshman stuff into their dorm. So like the parents, the students, guardians don't have to lift a finger. And so that really welcomes them into the school. But then throughout the next month, throughout the next semester, and even carrying into the next semester after that, we as bigs are putting on all these different programs with our littles in addition to giving them the one-on-one -on -one attention of letting them know where to find certain buildings or classrooms giving them that advice but also we would have things like human battleship where you'd play the game battleship except all of the students in like the pods that our freshmen are like laying on the ground and the other students are throwing water balloons at them like different stuff like that to really get people integrated into the school. It kind of forces them to meet new people. Um, and when you have that pressure on you, it really does help you kind of get out of your shell. Because um, that's what you need to have a successful undergrad undergraduate career is finding your peers uh, to have fun with and lean on. Because college is hard. So it's nice to have, you know, those friendships. Right, definitely. And you want it to be an overall fit for you. You know, obviously, academics is the main priority. But someone coming from out of state, you want to make sure the college feels at home for you and that you're going to make these lifelong friends um, when attending your college choice. Thanks, Claire. Yeah. Kind of to follow up on that, I mean, a big theme for us today is out of state because all the students that are watching today are coming in from Ohio. So um, how about, um, there are some, you know, things that your parents maybe would have been a little bit nervous about. Um, how helpful did you think their, the services at St. Vincent were for you? The, the career center, the health services, what happens if you get sick and you're three or four hours away from home? Um, are there people there to help you? Yeah, that was one thing at St. Vincent. I never felt like alone or like I, there anything was too hard for me to handle. I always knew that I could reach out to different departments on campus. So actually freshman year, I got sick with pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And one great thing about St. Vincent is how the student health and wellness fee works. It essentially is just part of your upfront payments, but you can attend the wellness center, which is essentially a clinic whenever you want to. They have a doctor come in a couple days a week. There are always nurses there and other health staff. Um, and I was able to get all of my prescription medicines as well as over-the-counter medicines from them. Um, and so that was great. Um, Cause having pneumonia when you're a freshman, you've never really lived on your own and you're three hours away from your parents. Um, it could have been a little scary, but yeah, everything worked out nicely with them. Um, and then as for like the career center, they were really good in helping me get a work study position. Um, so I actually had a few of them during my time at St. Vincent. Um, so that was nice to have a little extra money coming in, um, as well as just getting, you know, experience working close with departments on campus. So that's how I got a good relationship with admissions um, and also working in the alumni office. Um, also through the Career Center's Twitter page is actually how I found the application to um, the internship that I got the summer before my senior year. And that was a 10 week internship with the uh, FBI. So that was really exciting. Um, they couldn't have done a better job, the Career Center. I don't think I could have had any more good experiences with them, so. Great. Claire, what do you think you can give, you know, a piece of advice for someone who's listening today um, about coming to St. Vincent College or the college process in general? You know, what's your one piece of advice you would offer? Um, it's kind of like the quote that I think is attributed to Coco Chanel is like, when you're leaving, like put on every accessory, but then like take one off. 
And that's kind of how I felt with joining new groups like clubs and different stuff like that, because it kind of hits you when you arrive as a freshman with the club fair that happens like that first week. And you're like, oh my gosh, there are 20 different things that I want to sign up for. Go for it. You can always take them off later if you think that it's too much, but at least putting yourself out there, that's where you meet all these people and you figure out what really interests you. Um, and then those are the, you know, the extracurriculars that you might stick with all four years. Um, but yeah, good. so put your name down for everything. You can always take it off later. <laughs> right, good advice. Claire, we don't have time for too many more questions, but I kind of want to bring it back a little bit to the academics and have a quick question for you because students out there may be wondering this. Um, we know at St. Vincent that students take AP classes um, and sometimes they can bring those credits in and then they don't have to take the class when they get to campus. Um, I'm not sure if you did any AP classes, but maybe you were in classes with students who did. Um, do you think it's worth it for students to do those AP classes or would it be better for them to take the class when they get to college or does it just depend on the specific course? So for my experience, I took six AP courses in high school um, and I was able to get credit for all of them at St. Vincent um, and it really helped me kind of eliminate some of my core curriculum. Um, but I knew in my head, I still wanted to be here all four years. I didn't want the AP courses to help me graduate early. Um, so from my perspective, the AP courses helped prepare me for college because they were college level courses. Um, and then it helped me free up some of my schedule so that I could take other courses that I was really interested in. So like I said, my minors were in psychology and math. So because I had, um, like a government taken care of and an English taken care of, I could complete those core faster and then focus on the areas that I really, really enjoyed, uh, like in math and in psychology. Um, and when it comes to biology, um, I did take AP Bio, but how it was set up in my department was that I still had to take the first year of AP Bio, but if I was really successful in that course and in that lab, then the next semester I didn't have to take. Uh, so it was kind of like I got credit for AP, but they kind of pushed it off to make sure that I was really prepared and I wouldn't fall behind um, in case maybe I overestimated how much my AP course prepared me for that class. Um, so everything worked out and I got credit. I still sat in on the class, um, which was nice uh, that they were able to, you know, give me a seat even though I wasn't enrolled. Um, so I still got all the information, but yeah, so I recommend AP, um, even if you decide that you still want to take that class in college, I think it's great experience. Absolutely, and I think it prepares you easier transition from high school mm -hmm. to college when you take those AP classes. You have a um, little bit more knowledge of what to expect because the classes are more advanced. So I think we have time for one last question. Um, and again, people coming from out of state, attending another college, you know, the roommate, they're, they're concerned who they're gonna be paired up with. Can you explain, Claire, your roommate process, how you found your roommate for your freshman year and anything else you wanna elaborate about that? Yeah, so I took the roommate pairing sort of quiz uh, to find out, you know, what my personality would be, would be like and what I wanted in a roommate. Um, and just making sure that we'd be compatible. So I filled that out and I was randomly assigned a roommate. Uh, her name was Maria and she's from Connecticut. And we actually ran into each other during summer orientation. And so we were able to, you know, exchange phone numbers and all of that. So that was really nice. Um, but yeah, my roommate situation worked out really well. We stayed together freshman year as well as sophomore year. Um, the only reason we weren't roommates junior year was she became a prefect, uh, so I found another roommate, but yeah, so it was a really good experience for me. All right, awesome. So always answer those questionnaires honestly to get paired up with a good roommate match. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Well, I know we are basically out of time at this point, so I do personally want to thank Claire so much for taking some time out of your day to be with us, and Melissa, thanks for your help, and we are going to now turn it back over to you, Victoria. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. That was a wonderful session. I do have a bit of housekeeping, so once I end this webinar, there's going to be a quick four question questionnaire that we would love for you to take to help us understand how better to 
that run the virtual college exploration, we do encourage you to sign up for more information sessions at oacac.org. And do remember that this recording will be available going forward that will be on the oacac.org OACAC website. So uh, look out for a second set, second set of information sessions. And I thank you very much. It'll, your information will be given to these wonderful ladies that did the presentation for St. Vincent's today. So they will be able to contact you in the future and you can reach them at the information that is on the screen there. And thank you very much for your day and your time this morning.